Hello everyone, I am Muhammad Ammar and today I am going to start the phylum Porifera, the pore bearers or the sponges. And before this phylum we have discussed the animal till the cellular level of organization and from this video we are going to talk about the multicellular organization or the tissue level of organization. In this video of sponges we will discuss the cell type, body wall, skeleton, water current and the body form of the sponges and in the next video tutorial we will discuss the maintenance function and the reproduction of the sponges. So let's start. First of all we will discuss what is porifera. The porifera means the pore bearers also called as sponges and their body is multicellular but has no tissues and the asymmetric or radially symmetric means that there is no symmetry or if the symmetry is present then that is the radial symmetry. Their habitat is marine environment and there are three types of cells the pinacocytes, mesenchyme cells and the chonocytes. The approximately 9000 species of sponges vary in size from less than a centimeter to a mass that would more than fill your arms. So the range of their size is less than centimeter to the size of our arms. And the central cavity or the series of branching chambers through which a water circulates during filtration feeding and that central cavity is usually known as spongio seed. Now I'll discuss the cell types of the sponges. The sponges are more than colonies of independent cells and the sponges are specialized for particular functions. So these cells are specialized in their function. Every cell has special function to perform and this organization is often referred to as division of labor. So this is multicellular we know and every cell is responsible for their own function and this collectively is known as the division of labor. Now I'll discuss the body wall of the sponges. The outer layer is pinacoderm that is the layer of pinacocytes and just below the pinacocytes is a layer of that is jelly like layer called the mesohyle. And the mesenchyme cells move about in the mesohyles and are specialized for the reproduction, secreting skeleton elements, transporting and storing food and forming contractile rings around opening in the sponge walls. And below the mesohyle and lining of the inner chambers are chonocytes or the collar cells. So three layers are present. The outer one is the pinacoderm, then mesohyle and then the layer of the chonocytes or the collar cells. The chonocytes are flagellated cells that have a collar like ring of microvilli surrounding a flagellum. The microfilaments connect the microvilli forming a net like mesh within the collar and the flagellum creates water currents through the sponge and the collar filtrates the microscopic food particles from the water. So there are two things the flagellum and the collar plates. The flagellum is determined the direction of the movement of water and control the water movement while the collar filters or the collar filter plates these are responsible for the filtration of food particles from the water here this is the general morphology of the sponge cells this is the osculum that opening is used for the exit of water and this is generally one and here is the ostium and the ostium are the pores which are used to enter the water in the sponge seal and these are more than one and these uh, cells which are red in color these are the chonocytes and here is the structure of chonocytes we can see this is the collars or the collar plates and the blue arrow this shows the movement of water or the direction of water while the brown arrow this shows the uh, movement or direction of the food particles. So collar cells are responsible for the trapping of food particles or the filtration of food particles from the water and here is the flagellum and this is used for the direction of the 
water it determines the direction of the water after trapping the food particles the food particle join to form the food vacuoles so here is the general structure of the gonocytes now i'll discuss the skeleton of the sponge the sponges are supported by a skeleton that may consist of microscopic needle like spikes called the spicules the spicules are formed by amoebaid cells and are made up of calcium carbonate or silica and they may be they may take on a variety of shapes alternatively the skeleton may be made up of spongin spongin is a fibrous protein made up of collagen which is dried beaten and washed until the cells are removed to produce a commercial sponge so the skeleton may be composed of spicules and the spongin so these two elements are responsible for the composition of skeleton here in the diagram you can see these are the spongy spicules and these are needle like spikes that's why these are called the spicules now i'll discuss the water current and the body form the water current brings food and oxygen to a sponge and carry away metabolic and digestive wastes zoologists have described three sponge body form the askan type the cycan type and the leucan type so these three body forms are present in the sponges so we'll discuss them one by one first of all discuss the askan type it is the simplest and least common sponge body form askan types these are vast like and ostia are the outer openings of porosites and lead directly to the chambers called the sponge seal water exits the sponges through the osculum which is a single large opening at the top of the sponge so this is the simplest body form of the sponges here is the osculum and these are the ostia Os there are many ostia and a single osculum and this is the sponge seal which is the body cavity and these are the gonocytes which are cells responsible for the beating of flagella and movement of water so we can see the ostia is directly open opening into the sponge seal this is the simplest type of body form in which the ostia directly opens into sponge seal and then water leaves to the uh, leaves from the osculum so this was the askan type of body form and now i'll discuss the cycan type the sponge wall appears folded water enters a cycan sponge through opening called the dermal pores the dermal pores are the opening of invaginations of the body wall called the incurrent canals pores in the body wall connect incurrent canal to the radial canals and the radial canals leads to the sponge seal the gonocytes line radial canal and are the beating of gonocytes flagella moves water from the ostia through incurrent canal and the radial canal to the sponge seal and out of the osculum so here in the diagram you can see this is the body wall is folded here the folds are present in the body wall and the dermal pores are present in these folds and these folds form the two canals the incurrent canals here is the incurrent canals and the radial canal the dermal pores are opening directly into the incurrent canals and then after incurrent canal the incurrent canal directly opens or leads into the radial canal and then radial canal directly lead into the sponge seal so as we have seen in the askan type the ostia is directly opening into the sponge seal while in this case the dermal pores are first opening into the incurrent canal then the incurrent canal leads to the radial canal which directly opens into the sponge seal so on the inner wall of the this body the gonocytes are present these red cells these are used for to determine the direction of the movement of water here the blue arrow shows the direction of water and after that these are responsible to exit the water out through the osculum so this was the cycan type of body form now i'll discuss the leucan type leucan sponges have an ex extensively branched canal system 
Water enters the sponge through ostia and moves through branched incurrent canals, which leads to the chonocyte lime chambers. The canals leading away from the chambers are called excurrent canals, and the proliferation of chambers and canals has resulted in the absence of sponge seals and often multiple exit points from the for water leaving the sponge. So in this the water enters the sponge through ostia and moves to the branch incurrent canals which leads to the chonocyte lined chambers here in the diagram we can see these are the dermal pores so these leads to the uh, incurrent canals and then these incurrent canals leads to the chonocyte chambers this is the chonocyte chamber and after that this chonocyte chamber lead directly into the excurrent canal now this excurrent canals have multiple exit points we can see one is here and then other is here so there are more than one osculum which are used for the movement of water towards outside so first the water enter through the dermal pores to the incurrent canals and that incurrent canal leads to the chonocyte chambers and then from chonocyte chambers the water directly reach to the excurrent canals and after that the water is leave out through the osculum or the exit points and due to this extensively branch system the sponge seal is absent in this case so guys this was all about the cell type skeleton and body form of the sponges and in the next video tutorial i'll talk about the maintenance function and reproduction of the sponges and if you like the video please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to receive the notification of further videos. Thank you so much.